Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. So first up today, over the weekend, Tesla Scope reporting FSD 11.4.8 was rolling out to Tesla employees and specialized groups as part of software update.27.11. Let's get into some Cybertruck updates. First, we had Mark Benton on X saying he heard Cybertruck battery pack will be 122 kilowatt hours with a 350 mile range for the dual motor, saying this was coming from a reliable source. A number two, keep in mind doing the math, that would be 2.86 miles per kilowatt hour using those figures. We also got some more potential confirmation on that data as on the Ride the Lightning podcast episode 433 over the weekend, Ryan McCaffrey did say that a little birdie told him the Cybertruck battery pack size for the dual motor Cybertruck was going to be the same figure 122 kilowatt hours adding that he's expecting the dual motor Cybertruck to get around 348 miles of range. So using the efficiency metrics for the dual motor numbers that we're hearing, if we were to apply that to see what it would take for a 500 mile range Cybertruck, specifically on the tri-motor variant, you would take 500 miles divided by that efficiency for the dual motor of that 2.86, to get a pack size of roughly 175 kilowatt hours. Of course, the efficiency metrics could be different for the dual motor and the tri. However, just to give you a rough ballpark of what we could be seeing. Most importantly though, right now there is no guarantee we're actually gonna see a 500 mile tri motor Cybertruck, but that's what's been discussed now for years. Ryan did say when it comes to the dual motor metrics, he has it on very good authority. For context, the Model S and X have battery pack sizes around 99 kilowatt hours. For comparison, the Rivian R1T's large pack that gets it 352 miles of range comes in at 135 kilowatt hours. And for whatever it may be worth, Ryan did also predict that the Cybertruck was going to start showing up at the most popular Tesla showrooms and here we are. We have this one at a mall in San Diego and the rep said the VIN was 1200. In addition to San Diego, there was also one spotted in San Jose and this is perfect timing right ahead of Black Friday and the holidays, typically when these showrooms and malls are going to be the most busy. In addition to San Diego, there was also one spotted in a showroom in San Jose, so this is perfect timing right ahead of Black Friday and the holidays, typically when these showrooms and shopping centers will be the busiest. So it's like a, it's like a real usable pickup truck. Ah, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a real truck. It's just a ton of Then today on X, we had a different Dylan sharing a sign outside of the UTC mall with some more information on the Cybertruck, confirming a 2,500 pound payload and 11,000 pound towing capacity. But again, is this just for the dual motor variant? It's possible. Zooming in, we see ultra hard stainless steel exoskeleton, shatter resistant glass, ultra tough SMC bed up to 2,500 pound payload, adaptive air suspension with on and off road drive modes, and 11,000 pounds of towing power. This SMC bed, I believe, is a sheet molded compound or a sheet molded composite. I was able to find this study on sheet molding compound. The compression molding of sheet molding compound is the most successful and widespread application of fiber reinforced thermoset composites within the auto industry. The reason for this is that the technique offers bulk composite manufacture at low cost and produces a versatile product with sufficient mechanical properties that can deliver a class A automotive grade surface finish. The Rivian R1T has a max payload capacity of around 1,750 pounds and then the Ford F-150 Lightning has a range between 1,900 up to about 2,250 pounds. Now we still don't know for sure if that 2,500 pound payload capacity for the Cybertruck is for the dual motor or a tri-motor variant. Either way though, in terms of EV pickup trucks, it could be industry leading. And sometimes you just have to laugh as we have Jeffrey's analyst Philippe Houchois saying, however unlikely, just a few days before first deliveries, 
canceling Cybertruck would probably be positive for Tesla shares. With 2024 already a lost year for growth, it would help Tesla refocus on an edge that was built on simplicity, scale, and speed. In all actuality, Tesla was built on innovation and risk-taking. A take like this is just so short-sighted. Yes, maybe for the next 12 months, it's gonna slow Tesla down a little bit as they have to work on all of these new manufacturing techniques. But what about the time into perpetuity after that 12 or 18 month period when they're selling Cybertruck profitably, when it's creating a halo effect for the rest of the brand when it's selling potentially 300,000 units per year at scale. It's also pretty ironic because how many Wall Street analysts have been saying that Tesla's in trouble because they don't have enough models across enough different segments. Now Tesla takes a step in that direction and the analysts are saying, nope, it'd be better if you didn't enter a new segment with a new model. Ridiculous. And as Alexandra astutely pointed out at the end of September, Jeffries had 206,000 Tesla puts as reported in an SEC filing. And Sawyer shared Tesla added the Cybertruck delivery event ticket back to the referral program for 30,000 credits. So have a look if you're interested. Question. If you could spend less than $3 a month to make sure that all of your personal information online is protected and all of your online activity can't be tracked by anyone on all of your family's devices, plus some other useful features, does that seem like a good deal? It certainly was for me when I heard Matt Farrell at Undecided recommend Surfshark on his channel. Fast forward to today and Surfshark is sponsoring this video. Surfshark will encrypt all your internet activity so no one can track or steal your data no matter where you use the internet at home, in a coffee shop, or at the airport. Surfshark itself won't even track or store what you do online, so there's no record or activity logs anywhere. Say goodbye to websites that spam you with ads. Surfshark's clean web feature blocks ads, trackers, and malware. Surfshark is also one of the only VPNs that allows you to have one account for an unlimited number of devices. You can also change your IP address to look like it's coming from a different country, so you can unlock entirely new libraries of content. Surfshark offers 24-7 expert support, so even though it is incredibly easy to use, help is there anytime if you need it. To get an exclusive Surfshark Black Friday deal, use my code ELECTRIFIED for up to 6 months for free. They also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it for yourself. The link is in the description below. This was a fun little anecdote from Nicholas on X about the Swedish strike. He said that some of the IF Metal workers had a conflict written on their vests. So in response, some of the Tesla employees that again are against these union strikes put, thank you, we're fine on their vests. And here's that image shared by Nicholas. The real question is which one of you is this guy? One more anecdote from Nicholas, he had a technician out to service his Tesla and the technician said he's worked for 10 years as a technician in various workshops, but has never had as good of pay or as good of an employer as now. I love the work environment and 95% of employees do not want the union. Tom Zhu shared some pretty awesome pictures of a new supercharger location in Chongqing, China. I'd like to see something like this in the United States. The S3XY sign with the lights looks pretty cool. And here's one more. Tesla also posted this image on its Weibo account. Translation, from now until the end of the year, any Tesla owner in China who has free supercharging on their vehicle can trade that vehicle in for any new one and transfer over those free supercharging miles. I'm not sure how many owners in China would have unlimited free supercharging, but a nice incentive for the end of the year. Another quick fun one and a good reminder of the community that is Tesla a new world record for a Tesla light show, including 687 Teslas. This one in Finland, and the record keeps growing. From Reuters, we have a US judge dismissing an antitrust lawsuit accusing Elon and Tesla of forcing customers to pay high prices and suffer long waits for repairs by monopolizing the markets for vehicle maintenance and replacement parts. This could be a whole video in and of itself, but simply put, early on, Tesla wanted to have tight control over repairs and replacements because there was so much new technology, there were safety and security risks, letting people that might not be that familiar with electric cars and how they're built start getting getting in there, working on things, and doing repairs. However, as we've seen the past few years, Tesla has given much more control and autonomy to the DIY community and third-party service locations. So Tesla won this lawsuit and the judge said customers in the proposed class action failed to show either the alleged problems were not generally known when they bought their cars 
or they could not predict the cost to keep their cars running. She also said customers could not prove Tesla coerced them into using its services and parts simply because they bought their vehicles in the first place. And of course, as a newer company, Tesla needed time and data to figure out what replacement parts to have in store and to have available and in what regions. I also think it's ironic that Tesla was attacked for this when you have the traditional dealers that literally make most of their money on the service side. As always, good to see Tesla get a win here and continue to establish more precedence in Tesla's favor. BYD just unveiled its direct Model Y competitor called the Sea Lion 07. It's going to start between 27.7 thousand and 36 thousand US dollars, which is below the base price of the Model Y in the Chinese market. This will be the first model in the Sea Lion series and the first midsize all electric SUV in BYD's Ocean lineup. We don't have a ton of information right now, but they did say deliveries of this vehicle will start soon after its launch in the first half of 2024, and they mentioned the Sea Lion array of models will also include hybrids. The standard range Model Y in China starts at 37.1 thousand US dollars, then at the top of the range you have the performance at 50.7 thousand. BYD clearly taking the guerrilla marketing high volume approach, flooding the market with a lot of different options. At some point this will indeed cannibalize their own own sales to a degree, but the competition as strong as ever in the Chinese market. And there's still a lot we don't know about this vehicle, specifically the range and the ADAS features, but we'll get more as we get closer to the launch. To set the stage for the implosion that's happening at Cruise right now, GM also has some other issues it's working through. Last week, the CEO of GM's EV delivery van unit, Brightdrop, said it was reorganizing to reduce costs, and the CEO said he was leaving the division. All GM really said it was bringing Brightdrop fully into GM, meaning the beginning of a new chapter. GM did say it will resume production of these Bright Drop vans in 2024, and if you recall, they had idled the production due to delays in the battery modules since October earlier this year. When we talked about this in October, I had mentioned I heard from a source that it was actually a lack of demand in addition to any battery module delays that was the reason for idling the production. Then, over the weekend, Kyle Vogt, the CEO of Cruise, said that he was resigning signing from his position. He didn't really say much other than for what's next, he plans to spend time with family and explore some new ideas. I'm just speculating here, but if you've been watching the past few weeks, you will know that the house at Cruise has been on fire. This seems like Kyle just does not want to go down with the ship. And then today, we have the co-founder of Cruise and the chief product officer, Daniel Kahn, saying he's also resigning from the company. Apparently, as one of Kyle Vogt's last acts as CEO, he backed tracked on what we talked about last week. He said that the firm would now make a new tender offer to allow employees to sell shares just two days after canceling an earlier offer. And he said, as CEO, I take responsibility for the situation Cruise is in today. There are no excuses and there is no sugarcoating what has happened. We need to double down on safety, transparency, and community engagement. In other words, he takes responsibility and then 24 hours later decides to leave the company altogether. It's a really great reminder of how hard solving for autonomy truly is. We have seen a few other autonomous startups also fail, so will Cruise be added to that list in the months ahead? I'm not necessarily ready to go that far. I still want to see who Cruise can bring in to fill some of these leadership roles. But as I've said in weeks past, I won't be surprised at all if Cruise becomes a shell of itself and almost more of a small research project for GM, at least for the foreseeable future. But time will tell. One thing to keep an eye on though, Kyle Vogt was also the co-founder of Twitch. We also have another co-founder of Twitch, Emmett Shear, who was just named as OpenAI's new interim CEO. This could absolutely just be coincidental timing, but could we see Kyle Vogt team up again with Emmett Shear at OpenAI? We'll see. This Nikola news comes weeks after we heard that they have suspended sales and recalled all 209 of their heavy duty EV trucks due to leaks in the battery pack that can lead to fires. Now we have their CFO saying he was going to resign to pursue other opportunities less than one year after taking the job. This comes just a few months after Nikola named its fourth CEO in four years. Is anybody really that surprised though? A user on Reddit shared these plans for an upcoming test 
Tesla Supercharger near Ogden, Utah. This one does include two dedicated pull through spots, presumably for the Tesla Cybertruck. And I'm not sure what it means, but it does indeed say Cybertruck Max. Here's a quick video from Lucid Nair going over some of the features of the Lucid Gravity. You get a 12.9 inch center screen here and a 34 inch curved display system. And the center console is genius with this glass cover that slides out of the way to give you your key holder, two cup holders, two wireless chargers, but it all slides out of the way to give you these bento boxes that you can move wherever you want. These seats are heated, ventilated, and massage you, and the steering wheel is the shape of a square and sits lower, so you get an unobstructed view of the 34-inch curved display. In the second row, you get this built-in fold-out table, a large center screen in the middle, and two cup holders and an armrest. There's a massive panoramic sunroof that extends all the way to the third row where you get good legroom, good headroom. It can fit up to 122 cubic feet of storage space with all the seats flat. You get additional storage down here to fit those third row seats, and it can tow 6,000 pounds. And at a starting price around $85,000, Tesla just launched a new product on the Tesla shop, the Cybersoft Blanket for $150. So hopefully this is no indication of the pricing for the actual Cybertruck. Don't forget, check out Surfshark linked below. Take advantage of that Black Friday special if you're interested. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did. You can find me on X linked below. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.